I recently read a study that showed that people who died in 2024 had a spoon's worth of plastic accumulated in their brains, meaning that the amount of plastic it would take to make a plastic spoon, that's how much they found throughout all the cells in their brain when they dissolved it all down and separated out the plastic. We know there's plastic in the deepest ocean trench, there's plastic in the most remote parts of the world, and our brains themselves are loaded with plastic. But what is being done about this? Nothing. Like, what is being done in the medical field, even? Has your physician yet recommended to you to not use plastic with your drinks or food? Probably not. But it's very important that we decrease our plastic intake and we do what we can to help clear away plastic that already has accumulated in our bodies. Because it can't be good that it's there. We have initial research that suggests it's inflammatory, it causes oxidative strain, and that it could be associated with the development of dementia. People who have dementia tend to have much higher levels of these plastics found in their brain. So definitely, decrease your usage of plastics with drinks and food so you don't get as much inside of your body. Don't drink out of plastic water bottles. You know, refill stainless steel or glass water bottles instead. So we can decrease the amount we're taking in, but how can we get out the plastic that we already have? This is where we get to the four simple things that you can do. The first thing you can do is completely free, and that's fasting. Fasting initiates a process called autophagy, where the body begins to clean up this debris that's accumulated. So when we're in our growth phase, we tend to accumulate debris. Fasting puts us into a repair phase. So we go through and we clean up and reuse the stuff we can, get rid of the stuff we can't. So this is likely one of our best mechanisms to begin to get plastic out of our cells. But how do we make sure it just doesn't go into another cell once it gets cleared out? Well, that brings us to the first supplement I'm recommending, and that is Shilajit. Shilajit is an amazing supplement. It was created at the same time that the Himalaya Mountains were created. All the vegetation that was on the leading edges of those land masses got compressed together in the formation of that mountain range, and it turned into shilajit, this kind of black tar. And nowadays, it's mined and sold as a supplement. It's been used in ancient India, you know, starting thousands of years ago, and it's been recognized for its different beneficial characteristics. And the one we'd be using it for in this setting is its ability to bind different substances. So in ancient India, they called shilajit a madvahi, or a vehicle, because if you take it with nutrients or with medicinal substances, all of the little nooks and crannies present on the molecules within shilajit, they're all different shapes. And so they can fit a lot of different nutrients, minerals, and other substances. Plus, the body loves shilajit. It absorbs it like it's nothing. It's so easy for it to bring it in. So on the way in, Shilajit helps you bring the stuff in you want. And then that stuff detaches from Shilajit so you can use it. And once it's in your body, it will pick up other harmful things, toxins, like heavy metals. And this is what we're using it for, for plastic elimination, because I bet that one of these nooks and or crannies on Shilajit will bind microplastics. It's got so many different areas for things to click in, I bet you some of them will bind microplastics. And then the body can excrete it into the bile. Which brings us to our next supplement, Trifola or Trifola. Literally means three fruits. Tri, three, fala, fruits. And it's a mixture of three fruits. When you taste it, you won't think it's very fruity, it's very bitter. It's used commonly for insulin sensitization to improve that. So in type 2 diabetes, it can be helpful. But it also helps with elimination. It helps with, with getting rid of bile instead of reabsorbing it. And through that means, it can actually lower our cholesterol a little bit. So once the shilajit binds the plastic, then the trifola can help it be eliminated so it's not reabsorbed. And then lastly, we have N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine helps refresh the body's free radical scavenging system so it can help to mitigate the oxidative stress that comes from microplastics being around in the body. 
and it basically replenishes glutathione. So if there's a free radical, glutathione neutralizes it, and then glutathione needs to be refreshed back to its original state. And that's what N-acetylcysteine does. So if you do these four things, you are well on your way to reducing your plastic intake as best as you possibly can. There are a few other honorable mentions that I didn't include in this protocol, but research and time may show that they are quite effective, so I'll just mention them real quick. We have chlorophyll. That's a binder that's commonly used to bind mold toxins, so hey, maybe it'll bind plastics too. Activated charcoal binds all sorts of stuff, but it's not as ideal for daily usage because it'll also bind up the minerals that you want to keep in your body. So maybe that's a good one to use if you're fasting. And then zeolite. Zeolite operates under the same principle as activated charcoal. It's going to bind stuff up and have you get rid of it, but also not a great idea to use it all of the time because it'll bind up nutrients that you want to have. Thank you very much. See you next time.